What's up hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome to another miniature rescue. Today, let's try and make, paint, and play 4,000 points of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Yeah, I really do mean make. The rest might be a stretch, but you know, hold tight, check it out. The other day I was watching YouTube and I saw something that really got me thinking. It was a video over on the Miniac channel featuring a 10 millimeter vampire model. The model is part of a larger lineup of similar miniatures that make up an entire army. Now this video isn't sponsored, but it does rely heavily on one particular company called Forest Dragon. They are a monthly Patreon type of organization that puts out little 10 millimeter models each month in the form of 3D printable STL files. So pretty much, they have armies. This really got my mind going. What if, and stay with me here, we took the minis that we used to play Warhammer with and we made them even more tiny. I'm talking like real mini, super teeny tiny mini. So this idea isn't new. I remember Luke over at Geek Gaming doing something similar with one of his 3D printers, except it was all multi-based, movement tray style Kings of War or Warmaster. I don't really want any of that business. I want to be able to use my current 3.0 rule books and play a mini game in more miniature. Can it be done? Can we make Warhammer even more tiny? So much so that it fits inside a fanny pack. Well, I'm certainly gonna do my best to make it work. I need this to work. I have no idea why, but I've been taken over by this idea and I've really gotta see it through. Okay, so let's talk about the problems that we need to solve. Problem number one has pretty much been solved. Forest Dragon has a limited set of armies, but what they do have is very good. These tiny miniatures will do perfectly for use as proxies in existing armies. And I really love the way these look. The sculpts are very crisp, for being, especially for being so small. And the almost cartoonish exaggeration makes them very easy to tell apart on the table. The other massive factor in deciding to go with Forest Dragon minis was that they offered several ways to print the models. In a line, connected, for easier use on the table, and more akin to Kings of War and Warmaster style games, singular, so they come off of their movement trays and can pile into an enemy. More like Warhammer Fantasy, and definitely what I'm looking for as far as ways to print. Each army also has pre-supported versions of every model, so the singles and the lines are all ready to go. But a non-supported model is included as well if you want to make custom supports. The alternative to printing one of these armies is to scale down larger prints. There are an absolute ton of miniatures out there that are more than a little Warhammer inspired and would be fantastic scaled down to this size. Speaking of which, 10 millimeter is small, like incredibly small. Think about your 25 millimeter base on your smallest Warhammer mini and just cut that in half. It's really, really small and technically too small for handling one model at a time on the battlefield. So I decided to upscale everything to 15 millimeters or 150% unless uh, my math is wrong. Whatever, I made them a tiny bit larger so that each battle line unit was a little bit easier to handle. I want this to play as much like Age of Sigmar as possible, so each model needs to be able to stand on their own. Going just a little bit bigger with them makes them stable enough not to fall over, and you don't really need movement trays, although conveniently they are provided and can also be just as easily upscaled. The other and more important issue with scale is the measurement system. Normally we play in inches, so how do we convert all our numbers into the tiny hammer version that we need? Actually it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. Several people have actually reached out and told me that if I take the inches for each unit and just call those centimeters, that's going to be pretty close to perfect for the scale of these models. Even checking out the old Warmaster rules, in this scale, it also uses centimeters. So that's kind of a load off. I was planning on redoing all of the War Scrolls, I guess I don't have to now. I want to be able to travel with enough stuff to be able to play a game pretty much wherever I go. Luckily. All of the War Scrolls and rules are already in our pockets, on our phones. I have armies saved and ready to go whenever I need them. 
We could do the same thing for the dice using an app, but part of the thing that makes Warhammer fun for me is rolling physical dice. The more the better too. Most of the dice we use for this game are already pretty small, so I probably don't need to worry about that too much, but we do need something to carry them, as well as two armies and either some kind of foldable board or terrain to play on. For now, let's finish getting these armies printed out, painted up, and see what we're dealing with as far as what kind of box we're gonna need. I ended up picking out a vampire army that will stand in as a Soul Blight Gravelord's army and a wood elf kind of army that I can definitely make work for Sylvaneth. I decided that in order to get these armies done and playable, a total of 4,000 points, seriously, that I need to employ the cursed city style of painting minis. Mostly, I'm just making this up, but if you look at the box art for Warhammer Cursed City, you can see that the art is pretty striking and could make for a very cool looking army. More importantly, it probably won't take that long to paint two full armies in this type of paint scheme. Let's just see how it goes. I started by priming the miniatures using Badger Stein or Res Black. This was much easier than using a rattle can and I didn't lose any of the models in the process by having them fly off. Once the primer was dry, I went over all of the models with a pretty heavy dry brush of white paint. I made sure to use a pretty large makeup brush to make sure that the paint went on nice and soft to pick up all of the details. This was definitely a time-consuming part of this project. Each model may be small, but having to pick up nearly 80 models for each army is still no small task. I just threw on a podcast and got to it. And eventually, I ended up with cool black and white minis that even now are probably pretty good to go for a game. But that Cursed City look is definitely calling me. For the vampires, I'm gonna come in with a nice red from the side. That way, we get that really cool box art look for our models. It's fitting too, because most of the models in that Cursed City box happen to be cool vampires specifically for this army. Once the red is in, I come back with a light dry brush of white just to bring out some of the definition in those details. The Sylvaneth army was done in the same way, except I used green ink to give that color. This was a little less effective until I came back with that white dry brush and all of a sudden these models were looking pretty good. Let's be honest here, 4,000 points of Warhammer, even 15 millimeter is just so much to paint. And as much as I wish I could have painted everything this week, well we still don't even know if this is going to work or if it's gonna be any fun. I'm assuming it will be, but I'd rather test that out before actually committing to painting two full armies. All right, here is my Sylvaneth stand-in army. Some small tree folk that are sized for infantry and will take the spot of dryads. Some slightly larger, but still small infantry that I'm using as spite revenants. A couple of larger tree men that will be tree lords. A small character that will stand in for a branch witch. And I've got some elf archers and swordsmen for Kurnoth hunters with bows and swords. And to top it off, we have Alariel the Ever Queen, which is being represented by this really cool forest dragon. For the Soulblight Grave Lords, we have zombies for our battle line units, a total of 60. Honestly, with any more, it would be overwhelming to move them around at this size. More on that in a minute. A necromancer, which looks absolutely amazing as well as a vampire lord that you probably recognize. A zombie dragon and a vampire riding a zombie dragon and three units of blood knights. These models are so good, all of them. And at this size, they still have a ton of amazing details, which is really a credit to the sculptors. Going back to Battle Scrub, I checked the battle line for this army and noticed that you can take dire wolves instead of zombies. So I printed out 30 wolves to take the place of the 60 zombies. This might not be the best move strategically, but it makes us way easier to move around at this size. So more than likely, I'll paint these up and go with them instead. But hey, I've got a ton of zombies, just in case. Are these armies competitive? Who cares? They are tiny and this entire setup is on the same size board as the new Kill Team and Warcry. I also took the time to print out some scaled terrain just to fill out the board a little bit. 
Now, this isn't perfect by any stretch, and there are some things that I'm gonna have to change, but for real, this is an awesome start to building a pocket hammer set to take with me whenever I feel like getting a game in a Warhammer. The possibilities are honestly endless, and I do plan on adding more to this project as time goes on. So if you have any suggestions as to the kind of armies you would like to see in this scale, please let me know down in the comments. As far as fitting all of this awesome stuff into a container, I ended up going with my old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pencil box circa 1991. I've had this pencil box for a long time and it's definitely good at holding things I don't wanna lose. Today, it's gonna hold some Warhammers. For now, this will do, but I did also pick up a tackle box that will probably be a little more useful for long-term storage of multiple armies and anything else I might need as this particular hobby within the hobby starts to get a little bigger. I mean, not bigger, but you know, they're super tiny, you know, just more, bigger, you know. Once all the painting was done, the box was picked out and I got the board set up. It was finally time to see how this thing would work. It definitely feels like playing Age of Sigmar, enough to have a good time. And even at this size, the battle looks pretty epic. The tiny terrain is just enough to tell a little bit of a story and takes up enough space to force you to separate troops a little bit, get a little strategic. Of course, every game is different and depends on the scenario, but the fact that I can pull out an old pencil box and play a game of Warhammer is pretty incredible. Seriously, what I would have given for this to be a reality when I was younger. Imagine rolling up to the schoolyard in seventh grade and throwing down Warhammer dice instead of Pokemon cards. Maybe I would have been the only one, but it would have been seriously insane and worth it. Honestly, if you have a 3D printer at home, I highly recommend trying this out. If only so you can feel the satisfaction of printing out an entire 2000 point army all at once. But I have a feeling that you might have that light bulb moment like I did and want to go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. Until next time, thank you for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you enjoyed something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. A huge thank you to all the patrons who keep this channel going each week. I really couldn't do this without you guys. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.